Hello friends, I welcome you in the video lecture on Optimum Design Part 4. In this video, we are going to solve the third problem based on Optimum Design. In the previous video lecture, we have solved two numericals based on Optimum Design. So let us go through the problem statement. A tensile bar of 20 mm length is subjected to static force of 5000 Newton. If the factor of safety is 3, design the bar with the objective of minimizing the material cost out of the following materials given in the table. So this is uh, actually tensile bar, a bar subjected to tensile force of 5000 Newton. Its length is 20 mm and the factor of safety for this uh, design is 3. Now we have to design the bar that means we have to find out the cross section of this bar. Now assume this bar is having circular cross section. So that means in this problem, in this numerical, we have to find out the diameter of bar. But the objective of this uh, design is that we have to design the bar such that the cost of material must be minimum. That is the objective of optimization is a minimization of the cost, material cost. So we have four options of material, steel, aluminum alloy, titanium alloy and magnesium alloy. The corresponding densities are given. The corresponding material cost per kg is also given and the yield strength in Newton per mm square is also given for all these four materials. So first of all, we will write the given data. So it is a bar with a circular cross section. Now here we have assumed that this bar is having circular cross section. Its length is 20 mm. The force on this bar is of tensile nature and its magnitude is 5000 Newton. The factor of safety is 3 for this design. And we have to design the bar. That means we have to first find out the diameter. And with the objective of minimizing the material cost. So this is a tensile bar a bar subjected to tensile force of magnitude 5000 Newton. Its length is 20 mm and diameter D is unknown that we have to find out. So, as we know that these optimum design problems are solved by using Johnson's method of optimum design. And it is based on the total 9 steps. So, to solve this problem we have to go through the 9 steps. So, just we'll go one by one. So this is the first step. The first step is define the objective of optimum design and write initial PDE which express the quantity to be optimized. So in the first step we have to first write the objective of optimum design. Now here we don't need to de uh, define the objective of optimum design because already it is given in the problem statement and that ob objective is minimizing the material cost. So hence we can write here objective of optimum design is a minimization of material cost. Now second we have to write in this step number one initial PDE. Now remember that this is the definition of PDE. Now PDE is one which express the most significant functional requirement parameter to be maximized or most significant undesirable effect to be minimized. So actually this is the definition of primary design equation but in short you remember that in PDE always express the objective of optimum design. So whatever the objective of optimum design is there that is expressed by PDE. Now if you look at this objective of optimum design is minimization of material cost. So this primary design equation that is PDE must express or must show the equation of material cost. So the equation of material cost is nothing but primary design equation. So in this step we have to write the equation for material cost. So first of all we know that the material cost is equal to material cost in rupees is equal to mass in kg into cost per unit mass which is given in rupees per kg. So we'll use this notation for material cost in rupees as a C suffix material MTL then for mass we'll use small m and for cost per unit mass we'll use capital C so we have to write this as equation number 1 
Now in this equation, we have to find out this m and we have to replace the value of m here. So in order to find out the m, we know that the density rho is equal to m upon v. So we can write m is equal to rho into. Now here we know that the volume of this bar is pi by 4 d square into L. So we have to put the equation of v that is pi by 4 d square into L. Now we know that L is 20 mm. So we can put as you can see here the length is 20 mm. So we have to put here length as a 20 mm. So by putting the length as 20 mm here, we can get this equation. So this is the equation of m pi 5 into pi into rho into d square. We have to put this in equation number 1. So the material cost that is CMTL is equal to m into C. Put the value of m 5 into pi rho into d square here. So the equation becomes the cost of material is equal to 5 into pi rho d square into C. So this equation is nothing but the initial PDE that is initial primary design equation. Remember that the initial PDE always express the objective of optimum design. The objective of optimum design is minimization of material cost and hence this PDE express the equation of material cost. Now the second step, write all second subsidiary design equations. Now here remember that in optimum design generally the HDEs are the stress equations. That means whatever the component that we have to design, the type of stress that is going to induce in that component, the equation of that stress is nothing but SDE. So as we know that this bar is subjected to tensile, tensile force, so tensile stress will induce in this bar. That means the equation of tensile stress we have to use as a SDE. Therefore, we can write here the bar is subjected to tensile stress, which is given by so sigma t is equal to f upon cross-sectional area. So cross-sectional area is pi by 4 into d square. Now here we have to put the value of f that is 5000. So by putting the value of f 5000 newton in our equation, we can get this equation sigma t is equal to 5000 upon pi by 4 into d square. Just by simplifying this, we'll get sigma t is equal to 6366.19 upon d square. And this equation is nothing but subsidiary design equation. So subsidiary design equation is nothing but the type of stress that is going to induce in the component. Now we have to write the limit equation. Generally in the limit equation we have to write the equation of allowable stress. Now as this component is subjected to as this component is subjected to tensile stress so we have to write the equation of allowable tensile stress and we know that the allowable tensile stress is given by sigma t less than or equal to SYT upon FS. This equation indicate that sigma t is allowable tensile stress, SYT is yield strength and FS is factor of safety. And for safe design, this allowable tensile stress must be less than or equal to SYT upon FS. So we can replace this inequality sign by equality sign. That is, we can write this sigma t is equal to SYT upon FS. Now here we know that fs is 3 so by putting the value of fs here 3 we can get the equation of sigma t and this equation is nothing but the limit equation. So as a summary of this step 3 the limit equations are nothing but the equation of allowable stress and here component is subjected to tensile stress so we have to consider the equation of allowable tensile stress as a limit equation. Now in step number 4, we have to combine the all SDEs with the initial PDE so that we can get the developed PDE. Now, we know that the initial PDE that we can get it from step number 1, the initial PDE is CMTL is equal to 5 pi rho d square c. 
we have to write it as equation number 3 we can you can refer this equation from step number 1 and also from step number 2 we can get the sde that is subsidiary design equation and that equation is sigma t is equal to 6366.19 upon a d square now we have to combine these two equations if you can see in this initial pde we have one term that is a d square and in this sd also there is one term d square so we can replace this d square in this initial pde in terms of sde so we have to arrange this sde such that we can replace this d square so take that d square on the lhs now this is a sde in terms of d square now we have to put this sde in terms of d square here that is we have to put the value of d square here in this equation number 3 so we get the equation c material is equal to 5 into pi into rho c into 6366.19 upon sigma t so this is nothing but the developed pde so in step number 4 we have to combine sde with the initial pde and we have to obtain developed pde so we have written this initial pde we have written sde we have combined this sde in terms of d square into this initial pde and we got the developed pde now under step number 5 we have to combine limit equation with the developed pde and we have got this developed pde in step number 4 now we know that the developed pde from step number 4 is c material is equal to 5 into pi rho c into 6366.19 upon sigma t we have to write it it as equation number 4 we have to combine the limit equation with this developed pde so we have to write the limit equation so we can get it from step number 3 and limit equation is sigma t is equal to fyt upon 3 so we have to just simply replace this value of sigma t we have to put this value of sigma t in this equation number 4 that means actually we are combining this limit equation sigma t is equal to syt upon 3 with this developed pde so put this value in equation number 4 so here we have replaced the value of sigma t as a syt upon 3 that is written here let's simplify this rearrange the terms now in this equation what we have to do we have to make the separate group of material parameters now if you look at this equation the material parameters are rho that is density c that is much material cost per kg and this yield strength so just simply we have to bring these terms together into one bracket so we can write it as a 5 into pi into 3 into 6366.19 into bracket rho into c upon syt just we have grouped together the material parameters and just simplifying this we get the 2.99 into 10 to 5 into rho c upon syt and this equation is nothing but the final pde that is final primary design equation note that here objective of optimum design is minimization of material cost and this is the final pde which express the material cost that is cmtl now remember that this cost of material will be minimum if this bracket value will be minimum that is rho into c upon syt will be minimum then and then only the cost of material will be minimum so in the further step we have to select the material such that this group of parameter is minimum we have to select that material which is having this group of parameter minimum so we can write in the note the material cost c material will be minimum if for that material rho into c upon syt is minimum now in step number 6 we have to find out the group of material parameter that we have just seen in the step number 5 we have to find out its values from this table so we have been given 4 materials its corresponding densities in kg per meter cube here we have to convert this meter cube to mm cube so we have made another column in which the density values are given in kg per mm cube and this c value as it is syt value as it is 
so by referring this value of rho in kg per mm cube value of c in rupees per kg and value of syt in newton per mm square we have to find out this group of parameter that is rho into c upon syt which is present in the final pde this is the group of parameter so by putting the values of rho into c and syt in this equation we can get the value of this group of parameter for each and every material now in the step number 7 by comparing objective of optimum design with the values of group of material parameter we have to select the optimum material now as i said in the step number 5 the cost of material will be minimum if the value of this group of parameter is minimum if you look at all these four parameters the value of this group of parameter is minimum for steel and thus we can select here steel as a optimum material for this our problem so therefore from our table it is observed that rho into c upon syt is a minimum for steel therefore selecting the steel as a optimum material so in this way we have selected selected the material for this bar which is subjected to tensile load now we have selected the material now we have to find out the diameter of this bar so in the next step calculate the optimum value of eliminated geometrical parameter from sde by solving the original design equation so here we have to use the original sde which we have used in the step number two which we have written in the step number two so from step number two we can write the sde sigma t is equal to 6366.19 upon d square now here we know that sigma t is allowable tensile stress and it is given by syt upon fs here for steel syt value is 400 and fs is 3 by putting the value of syt and fs we can get the value of sigma t as 133.33 so put this value of syt here and calculate this value of d so by putting this value in equation above equation the value of sigma t is this this one and this is the rhs in this equation so by calculating this we can get the value of d as 6.90 so this is the value of this diameter of this bar now the last step is find the optimum value of quantity to be optimized now remember up to these eight steps just we have selected the material from the table and we have determined the diameter of bar but still we have not calculated the cost of material for this component so in this last step we have to find out the cost of material corresponds to this size of component so therefore we have final pde equation that we have seen in the step number 5 and that equation is cost of material cmtl is equal to 2.99 into 10 raised to 5 into rho c upon syt remember that this group of parameter we have calculated for each and every material in the tabular format in the previous steps and this group of parameter is minimum for steel thus we have selected the steel as a material optimum material for this problem so therefore we can write <coughs> As we have selected the steel as a optimum material and from the step number 6 for steel the value of this group of parameter is 9.75 into 10 to minus 7 so by putting this value of rho, rho c upon syt in this equation we can get the cost of material as 0.291 rupees so this is the optimum value of quantity to be optimized so remember that here our op objective of optimization was minimization of material cost and this is the minimum material cost for this component. <clears throat> Thanks for watching this video. If you have any doubt related to this problem, you can mention in the comment section.